All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, we have quite the fight going at BKFC 30, and that transpires on October the 1st. It's a heavyweight clash when Juan Torres readies to toe the line and knuckle up against Zach Kalmus, and happy to be welcoming Zach onto the show for the first time. How's the day going so far there, man? Seems like a busy day of training. Oh, busy day, always. Always a busy day when you're training for a bare-knuckle fighting championship uh, fight. Yeah, and you've had experience in a couple combat sports from what I can tell. It seems like you're really enjoying the you know BKFC competition. Like I was seeing that you have some gloved boxing experience and then some older IG photos seem to indicate some Muay Thai experience. So how are you enjoying BKFC as compared to maybe some of the other martial arts you previously were in? Well, not to discriminate against uh, any other martial art, you know, uh, that that takes place because I think I think BKFC is a compilation a combination of a combination if you will of all all a bunch of martial arts you have boxers you have great MMA fighters uh, great Muay Thai fighters you got guys coming from from all uh, all different realms and backgrounds and um, I think it's it's perfected under that under that roof and under that um, under that name, you know what I mean, in the squared circle. Yeah, it's such an interesting sport there because it's really, like you said, an amalgamation of a lot of different sports. Like, I would think your previous, like, Muay Thai experience would help with some of the clinch positioning and then obviously, like, the gloved boxing would inform some of the more, like, at-range kind of exchanges. So, yeah, definitely an exciting, interesting martial art. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's, uh, it's revolutionary. It's absolutely revolutionary, and um, nothing's been done like this before uh, in, in the history of the world. So, um, you know, uh, on this level, you know, with the platforms that we have uh, available to us at our fingertips, we're, we're going to bed at night and we turn off our phones. We're turning off a crystal ball. I mean, it's insane. It's absolutely insanity, and uh, to not to not uh, be grateful and humbled by the experiences provided by uh, the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship through that that media outlet. I mean, you, you got to be crazy, you know. It's it's, it's a dream. Yeah, I love the gratitude, man. That's super important. But it also seems like the appreciation of, you know, combat sports history is something that holds importance to you. Like I saw you were at the Bare Knuckle Hall of Fame over in Belfast, New York there, and seen a couple like older photos of you with different like boxing legends, like, you know, Peter McNeely and Evander Holyfield. Like how important is it to you to have that, you know, historical appreciation to kind of map out your own path? Well, I'll answer that question like this. You know, Dylan, um, history, it, it can be repeated, but it can't be repeated in the same way. Um, so, so combat sports and its uniqueness to any other sport, uh, when, when history is created, it is so important to uh, me and, and I think the fight community as, as a whole. Um, you know, it being a warrior to raise a village, I think all those people deserve uh, gratitude. And, um, um, you know, I think the history needs to be preserved. So uh, history needs to be preserved and it needs to be continued. And through preserving it, we're also continuing it. We're kind of setting the standard, uh, setting new standards and, and reaching for, for um, higher places um, I know I'm, I'm honored. One of my uh, fighters I know or somebody I know in the locker room is honored. It makes me feel like I'm being honored, whether or not I'm accepting an award or uh, somebody else I know, which, you know, another fighter is accepting an award. It, it brings a certain sense of just happiness about you, you know what I mean, to know that, that people genuinely care. Yeah, it's an awesome way to look at it there. I find there's a strong sense of community in, you know, the combat sports space in that regard. And I would think especially so at the places that you've gotten to train at. It seems like Champs Boxing Club has kind of been the preeminent spot as of late there. And is that a fair characterization? Is that kind of the main spot you're honing skills right now, Champs Boxing Club? I was kind of peeping the Instagram there. 
is my home gym. Now, uh, my car, it broke down, so I have a rental car right now. And uh, it's by the mileage. So I live about three hours away. And, uh, it's a, you know, it's a three-hour drive there and a three-hour drive back. Whether or not I stay at my grandmother's or my, my aunt's who live in Connecticut. And I have a lot of a lot of family in Connecticut and friends in Connecticut. And uh, I, I like to stay out there when I want to go out to spar and then I, I come home the next day. But uh, with my car being damaged and the new car charging by the mileage, I haven't made it to Champs in uh, about a, a little bit over a month. Um, so I've kind of, I've been training more locally. Um, but that, that is the home gym, you know, um, coach Jeff Esposito and, um, AJ Galante, they, they've, t- they've taken great care of me, you know, since I, um, kind of made the switch and just wanted a, a new environment, um, new, new people to train with. And, uh, you know, it's been great. I love Connecticut. So, um, I'm hoping, you know, I'm really hoping that bare knuckle as it's moving down moving down through state to state to state with legalization, you know, uh, I, I think it's only a matter of time before we're at a major casino in Connecticut uh, or New England, you know, basically New England, Connecticut, yeah. So. Yeah, cool to get those different looks for sure there because I had noticed also another post of you getting in that work with Mike Marshall. It seemed like some great sparring work to be had. The champion, Fly Mike, um, really helped me uh, grow as a fighter. I mean, we were working with these heavy hitters uh, who have so much experience. Mike Marshall has been fighting forever. Uh, also, Steve Vukosa, I've been sparring, and they, they had a 10-round fight about, uh, I think, a year ago, six months. I, I don't know. They fought for the England uh, title. They went 10 rounds to a draw. So having both of them as sparring partners for this camp definitely, definitely helped me. Yeah, you've gotten in some great camps over the years, it looks like. I mean, those are great spaces that we've just kind of touched on there, but a great camp I saw you were working with, like, not quite a year ago now, but I guess close to it, like working with, like, Elvin Burrito and Lorenzo Hunt in their Puerto Rico camp. What was that whole experience like? That seems like one of the bigger bare-knuckle camps in the world nowadays. Well, just keeping it real, when I was there, so when I was there, I was only there for two weeks at the time because the weather was terrible here. New England, um, in Massachusetts, in Gloucester, where I lived, like there was a snowstorm after snowstorm that week. It was it was terrible, and uh, it was freezing. And we lived right on an island. And I, I had hit up Elvin. You know, he had put the offer out there for me to come train anytime. And I went out and trained with Elvin. At the time I was there, Lorenzo wasn't there at that time. That I was there. Uh, and neither was Joey Beltron, right? Uh, it was really just me and a couple, and, um, you know, uh, the champ, Elvin Brito, and his coach, Coach Caesar, and a couple other guys. We were just training very hard. I was only there two weeks, but they, uh, those two weeks, man, they, they, they put me to uh, Wabla, Puerto Rico, and I'll definitely fight off for um, when, I, when I finally got the paperwork, and you know, uh, I, I, it was a it was a month time. It was a week before you know it would be at a month deadline. So, if you mind in training down a week before the fight, you know, I'm kind of in my last crunch week. So I didn't really have time to plan to, to go to Puerto Rico this time, or that that would have been a, a blessing and a half to be there with Elvin and uh, the champ Lorenzo Hunt, who uh, saw me in tryouts. He helped me out from tryouts in Tampa. So I love Lorenzo, and, uh, you know, I can't wait to get some work in the future. You know, it's just that's all we have. Yeah, and you mentioned the tryouts there. Like, how important was it to kind of come up in that sort of way? Like, it seems like you've had a really grassroots kind of progression within the sport of bare knuckle. Like, what was the whole tryout process like? Like, I, from what I understand, there was, like, you know, thousands of people there, and you were picked from, like, like there was a relatively small group of people who were picked i'm trying to say and just yeah how was that whole experience just like joining the promotion in such a grassroots way and now you're you know a couple fights in ready for your third fight and you know have a level of notoriety in that promotion yeah uh, it's incredible you know dylan i appreciate you asking that question i uh, specifically so far it's, it's a beautifully worded question because my whole life has been grassroots i wasn't supposed to fight uh 
my dad, he plans meetings for an investment company for 35, 40 years. He planned meetings from that life financial and work like every single day overseas and just hard work, you know what I mean? But, but blue, white collar, you know what I mean? Um, my mother, she, she, um, she ran the kitchens for Marriott for a number, like 20 something years. She was planning, um, the meetings that were planned by my dad, my mom was running the, the events for all the food and um, catering and all the decorations and all that. So, you know, uh, my parents were meeting meeting and events planners and, um, you know, my mom's an incredible chef, you know. So that, 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 the path that I took was on my own. I don't come from a fighting family. So grassroots, I mean, I had relatives, relatives trying to convince me not to fight when I was um, coming up in USA boxing and I lost, you know, my first five fights, five or six fights. I didn't start winning until losing for years, but it's something that I stuck with um, through high school and got out of high school and stuck with it. And I boxed from 20 to 29 years old as an amateur, 19 to sorry, 17 years old to 29 as an amateur. I didn't go pro until I was 29. Um, threw my hat in at the at the uh, national level in 2018. 2017, I won the Golden Gloves Open Class in Lowell. And then 2018, I got ranked 13th in the country. And I lost 13 fights in a row, I think, that year. But they do it on a point system in the amateurs. So I got ranked. And I was super proud, you know, coming up on this. You know, that was years ago. So I, the coronavirus hit. And uh, all the amateur boxing got shut down in the country. I was still an amateur when Corona hit. There was no USA boxing. There was nothing. So uh, I made the switch. 29, I said, time to hit the gear. Let's go pro. So I had a pro debut up in uh, New Hampshire. And I didn't really, you know, I had been messaging the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. I've been trying to get after the matchmaker and just sending messages, you know, I want to get in, I'll fight this one, I'll fight that one. Trying to contact people, you know. They didn't even know if it was a real profile. I didn't even know if I was like who I was or just some crazy kid, you know, some troll, some guy online, you know. And um, one day, my coach at the time, Lynn, uh, said, oh, we got this guy coming in, Chris Sorrow. And uh, I spar with Chris Sorrow, you know what I mean? And he's from Maine. He's in the uh, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. And we had a, a round, you know, a couple rounds, and uh, he got out of there, and then a few months later, he, he hit me up during the virus. He asked me if I would come up to uh, Maine and spar with him. So I, I drove up six, seven hours, and we sparred again. And then uh, we stayed in contact. You know, I really wanted it. You know, I started messaging Nate Shook and this one and that one. I was trying to get in contact with anyone, just Joey Beltron. I said, I'll fight Joey Beltron. I don't want to do that now, but I, <laughs> I was trying to say I'll do anything to get it in at the time. And uh, I saw the thing for the tryout in January. And uh, I dropped everything. I had a full slate at work. I was working at Hills Moving Company. And uh, I had a full slate at work, and I told them I couldn't do it. Um, I spent like a thousand plus dollars. I booked a flight for me and my manager at the time. <laughs> I got out there. You know, I spent every dollar I had at the time, like a thousand plus dollars, whatever. And I, I risked it all. You know, I walked in there and I was trying to fight people, basically. You know, I, I, <laughs> I would not accept no for an answer. They had to see me. I hit myself in the face so many times that I drew blood. You know what I mean? I, uh, I showed them that I truly wanted it, and uh, that's how I got in. So, yeah, very grassroots, very, very grassrooted. And uh, I, I don't think anybody believed in me when I went to the tryout at all. I just had to, I knew that I it was my destiny, is what I told Nate Shook. He asked me why I belong here. I, they picked five people at the end for interviews, and uh, I was one of them. And um, I told him it's my destiny to be here. This is where I belong. And when people see it back home, they'll say, well, that's, that's right. Fucking right. That's where Zach belongs. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like you would even further compound that notion. Like, you talk about people not necessarily knowing, like, the pedigree you brought to the table, but the tryouts giving that understanding. I would think there'd be, you know, zero doubters after that Bobo O'Bannon clinic. I felt like that was one of the more exciting heavyweight fights of that promotion 
has put on there. Yeah. I mean, you'd be surprised you know, the day after Bobo, the wolves were at my, my feet at the door. You know what I mean? Um, the, the, some people wanted to fight right away. Uh, not saying any names, but I think people can put their imagination in good use. People were trying to fight me right away after Bobo. My teeth were falling out, you know, and I needed, you know, plate surgery or whatever. So it's a brutal world. Uh, 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 people are fucking brutal, man. Um, just so awful sometimes um you know the majority like you know the majority of people in the world are not thick in the head there's so many good people i would say the good outweighs the bad 10 to 1 um it's really what the way you look at things you know but uh i don't have a negative personality or negative mindset so when i when uh, you know it might have been two or three people challenging me to fight out of hundreds of people telling me that i put on a good show so yeah, I mean, I get what you mean. There's a certain, like, troll culture online. But, I mean, then, obviously, in the subsequent outing, you get the unanimous decision win over, you know, Kyle McElroy and everything like that. Was there a level of, like, redemption, like, kind of sticking it to the trolls? Or based on the, you know, personality you kind of outlined there, maybe it was just more of, like, an individual sense of relief and kind of just growing in your own effort? I, I overcame, and I think it was a little bit of both of those things. Um... You know, sticking it to the trolls and also, I think, overcoming my own efforts because, um, you know, shortly after I fought Bobo and I was still very injured from it, um, Bobo being a formidable warrior, you know what I mean? I, uh, I was getting messages from Kyle McElroy, to, you know, dirty stuff, just mean stuff, you know, and I even cornered him after that to show you where my, my heart is. Um, I don't judge people even when they talk shit to me. I don't even judge them off that. I wait and I sit back and I try to study them. So, you know, whatever it is, um, he was mean from the get, you know what I mean? And uh, he got what was coming to him in New York. And uh, I think I could have pressed harder in that fight for sure. Uh, I think I definitely, I should have fucking knocked him out, but it's kind of hard to do that when he's running away the whole time. That's how the fight went. I mean, he had some good points. He had a couple, one time where he came forward, that was pretty much it. So you, you chase a guy taller than you. And, you know, you got to do that at the same time while the punches are coming at you. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a bad fight for him and it wasn't a bad fight for me. I mean, if he stood in the pocket with me and just exchanged power for power, I think I would have knocked him out. Right? I mean, if he didn't get on his fucking bicycle, I'm not, I'm not even talking shit about him. Everybody said that, that he was running the whole fight. If he were there, he backpedaled the whole fight. And he came forward once, threw a jab, cross, jab, cross, some of the highlights. I slipped it, slipped it, slipped it, and I hit him with a left hook, and he backed up. So, you know, the punch that he did land was after the bell. Okay? You can argue that I didn't hear the bell, and I hit him once, too. So one for one, it is what it is, bro. You know, but that's a fight game. It's not just about going out there and winning the fight. You gotta win the crowd, win the, win the judges, show some respect. I mean, put some respect on your own name when you go out there. You don't have to, you know, uh, win or lose. You don't have to walk away feeling like an asshole. <laughs> that's what I've real fighting sports. You know. Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, to that point, just based on, I guess, previous tape you may or may not have seen of your next opponent, Juan Torres, does he strike you as someone that will engage you more and, you know, be in range more, I guess? 100%. 100%. Juan Torres shouldn't even be in the same, shouldn't even be talked about in the same uh, conversation as Kyle McElroy. They're completely different athletes. Juan Torres is a real fighter. So, um, that's 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 the difference right there. And I want Torres is not gonna run from anybody and he's tough. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, what were your thoughts when this matchup kinda came about? Like were you already aware of some of his like stylistic attributes he brought to the table? Was there like some tape study that kinda ramped up when the bout offer kinda came your way? Like where was the awareness, I suppose? Well, I saw this fight with Hercules and you know Really backed up the whole 
time. So it can happen. You know, not used to the back. Can't criticize me with the cow he did back up a lot. Um, so it's just a different... It's, uh, sometimes fighters fighters make fights. That's the reality. Fighters make fights. So I just think much better matchup. Yeah, and are you happy at the activity this year? Because, I mean, it seemed like, I mean, the pandemic has been, you know, complicated in a lot of ways, like in some of the, you know, previous years there. But it seems like you're a couple in this year. Like, are you happy at there being a bit more of like a rate of activity, just getting to compete more this year? I mean, absolutely. I mean, it wouldn't be. But at the same time, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, like everybody else, I'm not like a lot of the other fighters in the sense that at this point, I want to just say, fight, 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 fight. I want to have good fights. I want to have fights that make sense to me so I can put my heart behind it, give the fans what they deserve. You know what I mean? That That's what I want. So it has to be a fight that I believe in. Yeah, I can get what you're saying in that sense. I imagine, yeah, this fight kind of piqued your interest based on how you're kind of laying it out there. But I guess I'm curious as to when BKFC got on your radar. Because, like, earlier you were talking about how, like, you were in that, like, you know, top 15 U.S. amateur heavyweights at the point when, like, Richard Torres was there. And then, you know, before he became the Olympic silver medalist there. And then you were talking about how, like, trying to go pro during the pandemic. Like, when did BKFC kind of get on your radar like do you remember like a an initial time you saw bare knuckle and you're like oh that'd be a cool thing to do yeah yeah i started watching it in the beginning you know what i mean and then i just didn't know how you go about getting into it when i started watching it i i still was trying to go to nationals and make the olympic team for boxing so i i got ranked in 2018 so um because he had already been around but what, what, um you know what i mean they're going on their fourth year coming up yeah the growth has just been tremendous for sure i mean you got like the different moments like you getting to meet like blue face and stuff like that and just the scale of it ramping up so yeah it's good to see i mean it's been on my radar forever um i i was i was bare knuckle fighting before bare knuckle fighting was a thing I've been taking the gloves off and practice and hitting bags and doing things that kids do with gloves on without gloves for forever. It's been part of my routine forever. Uh, I fought, I fought these unsanctioned bare knuckle fights, um, downtown. Uh, it was like mass bump fights. It was straight up just bare knuckle fighting in parking lots. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I'm saying that I had, I had an introduction to bare knuckle fighting already. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, maybe a bit of ex- probably been in at least 350 fights, uh, you know, between high school and you know now I'm 31. Uh, 11 years since I I mean 31 from 20. So yeah, I'm talking about graduating at 18, 13 years, and then you had high school. 17 years, I might have fought 400 times. I got kicked out of like four high schools. So. <laughs> Yeah, maybe a little bit of Ice Wars kind of fights there, like with the trashers and stuff. And I was a goalie, so I used to grab guys and I'd smack them with a blocker right on the <laughs> chin because it's solid fiberglass. You just slide sl- sl- destroy them. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome for sure, man. And it's you know, like I woke up the other day, I felt, I felt. Uh, I felt pretty good. I drove all the way to Boston. It was traffic everywhere. It took me all back roads just to just to spar fucking 20 minutes straight with a WBC Green Belt World Champion in a, in a public park, you know what I mean, at a, at a, on a track. And uh, no headgears, just fucking bashing each other in the head. <laughs> you just, you love it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like historically you've always gone to you know, whatever extent to get that, you know, good quality work over the years and stuff like that. And that was one of the cool aspects of getting to do some deeper research into the resume there. Like, you know, back in like, say 2019, when you were getting in that work with like, you know, Steve Vukosa, like who won the WBC United States heavyweight title. I was just, that's the guy, I was just in the park with him um, yesterday. Yesterday I was in Quincy, uh, um, in Quincy at the park, um, at the track. And we were just beating each other up for 20 minutes. On Sunday, I was with Steve, and we did 30 minutes straight sparring, so. 
yeah, it's work work uh, with you know. I, I constantly try to improve, and uh, I'm working with guys who can make me better. You know, I'm not, I'm not putting around with a guy who's boxed for one year. I'm going in there with guys who you know potentially could could knock out anyone. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. The desire to grow is super admirable and is reflective in, you know, where you're at and like, you know, your combative career with like BKFC and everything like that. And like the previous boxing experience that I mentioned, but yeah, I really appreciate you coming on the show, Zach. It's been great getting to talk to you ahead of this big fight here, but I do also want to be mindful of the rest of your schedule today and everything. So to that point, is there maybe anything you might want to add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up? Absolutely, Dylan. I want to thank you so much. Also, I want to say that, you know, um, as far as back to the history comment, I'll, I'll leave you with this. As history has it, John Sullivan was from Boston. He's buried in Boston. And um, he's a heavyweight from Boston who uh, went down to Belfast to train. Um, you know, and get straight and train bare knuckle boxing. He fought crazy fights in bare knuckle boxing. So he's kind of like the, uh, you know, that's what the Hall of Fame is. is you know, statues out front. Everybody says John Sullivan. He's the first 1901 heavyweight world champion of the world. First glove champion of the world. So, he's from Boston, so I feel like it's my duty uh, to, to keep history going. It's my duty to... Uh, I'm the first heavyweight from Massachusetts with a license to bare knuckle box. So, that's history repeating itself right there. And um, I'm, prepared, I'm prepared to uh, to do anything for this. I'll die for this. I'd rather live for it, so I'm going to keep training really hard um, and making good decisions. But um, I'm I'm doing this for history's sake, too, for Boston, for New England, for Massachusetts. Uh, this This is why I do it, for Gloucester, truly. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of working in another one here, but just because you mentioned John L. Sullivan, I think BKFC is unique because, like, once you get to that, like, heavyweight title contendership level, like, you're really getting both the BKFC belt and also the Police Gazette belt that has that lineage to John L. Sullivan. Like, do you think there would be almost greater value in winning that Police Gazette title because you'd be kind of interwoven in that lineage? Or is there something also to the, you know, BKFC belt because it's kind of like the new guard path ahead kind of thing? Or is it just both are great in a hypothetical kind of sense? Both are great in their own. And they're completely different. You know, we're talking about history and then we're talking about things that are, are more new. You know, um, can't be compared you know the uh police gazette is is on its own you know the bkfc is on its own they're their own entities so um i'm just grateful to be recognized by both i I love the bare knuckle fighting championship i love fighting under that that brand and that that um squared circle and that company i think they take great care of us i love david feldman i love nate shook i love the whole team um Everybody, everybody has treated me so good. And um, Ben, in terms of the uh, Hall of Fame, I love Mr. Scott Burt and uh, Mr. Howie Atherton and just everybody involved with, with Belfast. It's a, it's a wonderful place, you know, and they've, they've taken me in and made me feel uh, like one of their own. You know, um, it's important to me to have friends like uh, like Josh Cole who lives there and uh, just everybody involved there, that, that Knuckle Town, USA. That's history. You can't change that. So... My goal one day is to be inducted into the Bare Knuckle Hall of Fame. That's my, my, my only real dream, you know. Forget titles and all that. I, I just, I would like to, to have my place in the Hall of Fame when I'm done. Well, I think that's a great note to kind of end things off on there. I mean, you're certainly putting in the work there. So interesting to see the next chapter in the story unfurl there. And that's going to be going down BKFC 30 on October the 1st. And again, to reiterate, Zach, really appreciate you coming on the show ahead of this Juan Torres fight. And just, you know, you enjoy the rest of your day and looking forward to checking out the fight when it goes down too, man. Thank you so much, Dylan. I appreciate your time. I really do.